Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Chris. Welcome to Linux Tech Geek. So in today's video, what I want to discuss is something that I never actually thought I would say. And that is, I finally managed to break Gentoo. Now, I didn't fully break it, okay? What I broke was Portage. And the way I did that was whenever KDE 6.0 came out, I I edited a couple of different profiles that I probably shouldn't have edited and I pretty much I was bypass trying to bypass every single thing that the maintainers did not want you to bypass in order to install uh testing software, right? So yeah, that's <laughs> that's exactly what I did. Now at first when I did it it didn't um it, it seemed to work just fine and i so i i didn't think anything of it well here recently when i've been trying to install you know when i've been trying to update the system and everything it um yeah it wouldn't allow me to to really update the system i was getting a bunch of errors not only was i getting a bunch of errors but Worse, I was getting a bunch of uh, soft blocking and hard blocking issues. Now, if you guys have ran Gen 2 for a while, just like I have, you know that whenever you have a lot of soft blocking or hard blocking, sometimes that stuff is a pain in the butt to get around or to, to fix. Uh, so is circular dependencies and all of that stuff. And I... Um, Quite frankly, I didn't want to deal with it. Um, I knew, I knew by installing KDE six um, that there was a chance that I could kind of mess things up. Um, I took a chance on it in a way, and to be all honest, um, it really wasn't even worth it because I only ran KDE six for I don't know. Um, probably a day or two i was going to actually make a video on kde6 however um there's a good reason why it's still in ptr testing or testing or whatever uh, and that's because it just you know some of the bugs haven't been worked out and i know on other distributions uh people have said that you know, KDE 6, 6 runs fine, but I can tell you on Gen 2, or at least the version that I had installed, um, it wasn't fine. In fact, it was slow. There was a lot of things. KWIND uh, was freaking out all the time. There was just a lot of different things kind of going on. In hindsight, though, um, I knew that um, there, was, there was a chance that I needed to... Uh, do a fresh install of a uh, Linux distribution in a way, right? Because my my Linux box, uh, it was starting to get filled up from doing all the videos the past year and testing out different software and stuff like that. I had configuration files everywhere. Um, stuff wasn't in a pretty good spot i mean it looked like my home folder was trashed okay um not only that but quite honest uh just like dt i i didn't really understand i mean i i knew what i had installed uh for the main things but there was software that i had installed that i wasn't even using um and that's because i make content here on youtube for you guys but as you can see, <laughs> as you can see, I do, um, I am uh, running some Linux distribution. So let me go ahead and flip over to the desktop and I'll show you what I ended up uh, using or what I got installed here. Um, a little hint, it's not Gen 2, uh, but we'll, we'll get really into that. All right, so we're on the desktop here. So what... What Linux distribution did I end up um, installing, right? This is Xmonad. I am running Xmonad, and you can see that I do got Kitty pulled up, even though I don't have this thing. Um, I don't have it tweaked out or anything. Um, that's another thing, too. Um, 
some of my configuration files, like I'm going to have to really just sit down and, uh, you know, move all my configuration files back to where they need to be. Uh, so all my stuff kind of works properly. Now I do have Emacs set up. I don't have, I don't have anything else really set up. The only thing I got set up right now is Emacs. I got OBS set up so I can record this video for you guys. Um, I got Discord set up. And that's really about it. All right, but if we do Neo Fetch, so I went ahead and I installed OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Now I know what you guys are thinking. I'm getting on the hype train of OpenSUSE, and, and that's not it. That's not it. So I was talking to my buddy last night and we was talking about um, we was talking about different distributions that I could try out and he mentioned uh, you should try Void Linux and I told him I've tried out Void Linux before and I really didn't like it um, and then he was like well he was like, there's OpenSUSE, and I was like, yeah, there is OpenSUSE, and I've never really gave OpenSUSE a try. I'll be quite honest. I, I've, I've never installed this. I've never gave it a legit um, try or anything. And then I, I was like, well, I was like, I could install Arch Linux or Arco Linux, um, and that's always... that distribution of arch has always treated me very well and um i quite like arco so last night i had two isos okay this is this is kind of funny had two isos i had an open iso and i had a arco x monad iso and i was like you know what i was like i'm gonna put these uh, I was like, I'm going to put these uh, on this thumb drive or whatever, okay, and uh, I'm going to, I'm going to move them around, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do a randomizer on it, and I'm going to uh, stick one of the sticks on my computer, I was like, and whatever one that lands, um, that's the distro I'll, I'll choose. Well, <laughs> The first distro ended up being Tumbleweed. Now, for whatever reason, whenever I tried to boot up the ISO last night of Tumbleweed, um, it wouldn't boot up. And I was like, man. And I've had this problem with uh, OpenSUSE before. Sometimes, for whatever reason, OpenSUSE is kind of picky about... Um, you know what hardware it wants to install on at least for me in a way it, it's been like this um my last laptop that i had for instance i could not install open suits on that laptop for the life of me i don't know why all right but it would not ever it, it, it wouldn't even get past the the install um you know the install uh calamari's whatever it wouldn't even launch all right so this time when I put in the stick and uh, OpenSUSE wouldn't boot up on one of my sticks, I was like, man, I was like, maybe I just don't have good luck with OpenSUSE. Whatever. It, it happens, right? I was like, I can always go to Arco. I know Arco works. Well, I put in my Arco stick. And what do you know? Again, it was OpenSUSE. And I was like, did I just inst install OpenSUSE twice on two different sticks? I was like, I couldn't have done that because I, I, I remember I remember downloading the ISOs. I remember clicking the right ISO. Honestly, I don't know what happened. But the second USB stick that had OpenSUSE on, um, yeah, it booted right up. Now, I will admit that the Calamari's installer or whatever installer they use is slow. Um, OpenSUSE to install OpenSUSE is extremely slow. I don't know why. And I hate accepting that stupid EULA agreement. Like, don't, don't get me started on the EULA uh, stuff. Because if I wanted to read a EULA and if I wanted to sign a bunch of stuff, I'd... I'd go back to Windows, you know. So, 
what have I done um, since really installing OpenSUSE? Well, the first thing that I had to uh, get working or whatever, I had to get the codex working. Now, the codecs are kind of weird here on OpenSUSE. Um, it's something... I don't know if it's because it's an RPM based distro or what. I never had to do this on Gen 2, so I, honestly, I didn't know what to do. But pretty much, um, I installed something called OPI. Okay, and then we did, I just did a OPI codex, and it installed all the, um, all the codecs and stuff, so that way I can watch, um, I guess, like, uh, digital rights uh drm uh videos and stuff like that like on youtube and stuff okay and it installed some other um it's installed some codecs and installed a couple other different things next thing i've done is um of course i got my nerd fonts installed i had to i have to have my nerd fonts because half of my programs that i use um require nerd fonts installed now, you may have noticed that my top bar here in uh, XMO bar, it looks a little ugly, and it, it does, because it was kind of throwing me off. I need to look at the configuration again, because I may be using XMO bar the way that you're supposed to use it from... Um, Back in the day, they changed the way that the fonts get rendered um, from like a newer a newer version. Now in Gen 2, I was running an older version of Xmo Bar, so I had to do my uh, my font rendering uh, a different way. I'm pretty sure that's why the fonts are kind of looking a little busted here on the uh, the top bar. What else have I done? Well. I've got, of course, I got NeoFetch installed. Um, I got Oh My Bash installed, just to have some bling here um, on my uh, my prompt, okay. And then, of course, like I said, um, I got you know I got a wallpaper installed, and um, I got you know I got Emacs installed, and I got all my Emacs stuff going. So that works, and and that works pretty. You know, just like it did uh, in Gen 2. I haven't had any issues, really, um, with OpenSUSE so far. I mean, I've, I've been running it for about a day, day and a half now. And uh, it's going pretty good. I do need to, um, like I said, I do need to do some, um, some stuff with, uh, like, my... Uh, my repo, so if I go to my git repo, it's my dot files here. And yeah, I can kind of show you guys. So, this is my my uh, git bear repository. I need to set up my git bear repository again, of course. See, I'm trying to think what else I need to do. I need to set up Kitty properly and set up Alacrity because sometimes I like to use both. I need to install Brophy. I mean, there's a bunch of different things I need to, to kind of get working here. And that's another reason why I personally don't like distro hopping. It's not that it's hard or anything like that. It's just that when you do it, you have to, like, there are so many things that you have to do. Like, so many different things that you have to do in order to get your desktop or everything else going the way that you you like to have it right like i've got i mean i've got like 50 configuration files that i gotta you know move over and stuff like that it's not hard to do because i backed those things up but it's just a pain in the butt to do because i don't you know i don't want to do it again <laughs> you know uh also x bar is kind of it's looking a little weird and i need a i need to fix that I don't even have XMO bar here on my third monitor. I don't know why. Um, so I'm going to have to look at the configuration file on XMO NED, see, see what's going on with that. Um, but yeah, pretty much that is about it. Um, I do 
apologize about the lack of content here lately. Uh, I've actually been working on my other YouTube channel, my gaming channel a little bit to try and, um, cause I was neglecting them. Guys, I've run two YouTube channels, um, and I stream on Twitch and I have a full-time job plus a wife and all that stuff. Trust me when I say that, um, I don't really mean to neglect anybody, but Something something has to take a back seat every once in a while, and uh, so when I do my YouTube content, typically my gaming stuff takes a back seat. When I do my gaming stuff, my Linux content takes a back seat. You know, it, it's like um, so. Um, unfortunately, that's kind of the way it is. But I'm gonna try and at least get y'all a video out a week or so. Um, about once a week would be a good a good thing um that way i'm not like you know <laughs> i'm not fighting with myself to figure out how uh how to split up all my time and everything so i do want to thank you guys for watching and i want to thank all the new subscribers that i got and um, i do appreciate it and if you guys have any questions or comments feel free to leave them down below and i'll get back to you guys and until next time, I want you guys to take care, be safe, and peace. Bye, guys.